Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, today we are considering the amendments to House Bill 30. Not only will we be considering the budget, but I'm sure we're going to be engaging in some very interesting debate before we complete it. And we all know that debate is healthy. Debate is the essence of the legislative process and our system of democratic government. This past Sunday, the Appropriations Committee reported our House Bill 30 that represents the spending plan for the Commonwealth of Virginia for the two-year period. To say, Mr. Speaker, that this was an unusual uh, session in crafting a budget would be a great understatement. As I indicated in my remarks to the committee when we took the bill up, I've not seen anything like the budget crisis, the situation that we experience. As I indicated then, this budget sort of represents a perfect storm. Think about it. We had Governor Kane leaving office and Governor McDonald transitioning into office. We had what amounted to a $1.9 billion inherited deficit. Economic reality also dictated that if the $1.9 billion car tax relief is not restored by the General Assembly, then local governments will be saddling the taxpayers for all of the personal property tax. Imposing such a steep financial burden, burden on working families and anxious taxpayers already grappling with job losses and economic uncertainties makes absolutely no sense. In my 49 years as a member of this body, I've not seen any budget situation this bad, and I think it's because there hadn't been one. The nation's economy is in the worst shape it has been in decades, and while Virginia is faring much better than most other states, the stark new economic reality is the Commonwealth's projected general fund revenues for the next two years will be at the level of 2006. Please note that the re general fund revenue for the next two years will be less than the level or right at the level of 2006. While Governor Keene and the General Assembly worked together to balance the budget over the last two years, the fact is that almost two-thirds of the $6.3 billion spending reductions from the current budget are basically one-time actions, meaning that the budget is structurally out of balance. I'm not critical of our previous actions to balance the budget. However, I simply want to state the inevitable is now before us. We can no longer rely on easy, one-time fixes for the challenges facing the Commonwealth of Virginia. Though we certainly did not seek these circumstances, we have no choice but to seize this opportunity to enact sensible, long-time structural reforms in state spending that can make this best state in America even better. As I look back on how we balance the 2008-2010 budget, what stands out most is that approximately one-third of the budget, which would include public safety and higher education, has already seen collect cumulative reductions of nearly 20 percent, with higher education alone being reduced by almost 30 percent. On the other hand, the two-thirds of the budget, the other two-thirds, health and human resources and public education, as everyone knows, have been largely held harmless and spared the deep reductions that other areas have had. I would also note that these two areas of the budget have also seen the greatest spending increases since 2004. Clearly, in developing the 2010-2012 biennial budget, Mr. Speaker, economic reality dictated that we look very closely at this portion of the budget. Of course, the fundamentally important decision to restore the contact relief 
made early in the session by this body on January the 21st, when we unanimously rejected Governor Kane's proposed 17 percent increase in the state income tax. This key vote made it very clear that our shared commitment to approving a state budget that will hasten economic recovery with our new taxes, job-producing businesses. As we begin to debate today, we be, the actions of the committee, I am sure that there will be disagreements among the members of this body. Certainly there will be many about specific budget cuts. But, Mr. Speaker, it's one thing to be against and question spending cuts. It's another to offer alternatives, which we need to do in order to continue the fiscal stewardship that this state is famous for. House Bill 30 represents the rising of the budget phoenix. By doing the thing today, our budget will be structurally more balanced. So as the economy recovers, we can begin to make new investments and enjoy growing levels of opportunities and prosperity. Specifically, the committee of budget amendments, Mr. Speaker, accomplish at least five major ends. Number one, it mitigates the law enforcement public safety cuts since these activities are among the primary responsibilities of state government. Number two, it invests in job-creating economic development. Number three, minimizes the impact of cuts on the health safety net. Number four, provides school divisions maximum flexibility in implementing education budget reductions. And five, it establishes a substantial reserve to replenish the rainy day fund and help ensure a more structurally balanced budget going forward. I'm sure that everyone shares my belief that the budget before us meets all of the core services. I'm sure that not everyone agrees with that. However, I do believe that the budget today strikes a sensible balance between meeting the core commitments that we as legislators like to talk about and the burden placed on the taxpayers of Virginia. For those who believe that a different course should have been taken, I would say there was an opportunity to do so by voting for the tax increase back in January. If you voted your conviction back in January, then today's vote is not about being against education, it's not about being against health care, but rather it's a fulfillment of the intention that we expressed on January the 21st to adopt the budget within the resources we have already agreed upon. I am reminded of the quote that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. I guess the budget equivalent of that would be that everyone wants a balanced budget, but nobody wants to cut it. Frankly, Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud to deliver these amendments to the state budget. And let me say this, some of the remarks that you've heard today might suggest to you that actions that we have taken with regard to a number of the budget cuts, specifically with regard to changes in the retirement funding, might jeopardize Virginia as the best state in the country to draw business and bring new jobs, or might in somehow, some way jeopardize our reputation for being the best managed state fiscally and the best state in which to raise a child. Let me assure this body there is no risk to losing any of those. There's been not one concern expressed by the bond rating agencies at the actions that we have taken in this budget, specifically with regard to funding the retirement system.
Hopefully, Mr. Speaker, the members of the House will agree that we've done a good job on the budget. And as my friend Vince Callahan, who was a former chairman of this committee, used to say, there's no such thing as a perfect budget. In good times, we don't spend enough. In bad times, <laughs> we cut the wrong programs. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize and acknowledge the tremendous work of our highly motivated, devoted professional staff on the Appropriations Committee under the direction of the Director Robert Vaughn and all of the staff members. They've done a fantastic job in bringing us to this hour. And I thank you, Mr.